Welcome to Lux of Technology series. My name is Sergei Chuk, and I'm happy to present another webinar of a series of free online events with famous IT speakers and lectures. To the speaker using Q&A box that you can see in your panel. And please note that if you have any technical issues or related questions, you can use chat box. You can find it in your panel. So just again, if you have a question to the speaker, so please use Q&A box and speaker will be able to read your questions and answer them. If you have any technical issues or related questions, you can use uh, So our guest speaker is Nicola Strangel. Uh, our software are architect with more than 12 years of experience IT lecturer, speaker, and author. So I'm happy to introduce uh, to you Nicholas Franco and pass the word to him. Nicholas? Uh, thanks for joining me. Um, I will share my desktop. Yes. Thanks for listening. Now it should be good. Um, so welcome to this uh, webinar, Boot and DevOps. So in I can introduce me, I'm Nicolas Frankel. I'm a developer and an architect. I've always been working as a consultant. I'm a teacher in higher education university and trainer, and as well, obviously, a speaker. Tonight we will talk about Spring Boot and DevOps. And in this case, um, DevOps, as you know, may mean many, many things. Uh, uh, this is uh, about uh, developers and operation and collaboration. And I will tell you that, but in case Spring Boot can help you with communicating in your organization, that you have to do yourself. Uh, point or trait of DevOps is to as code, meaning that you will uh, script uh, installation of stuff. Um, again, I'm sorry, but Spring will not help you with that. You've got dedicated tools, you've got Pet, you've got Chef, you've got Ansible, very great tools, and they work very well. Again, is it automate everything through uh, the No, Spring Boot cannot help you with that. So we restrict our DevOps uh, on talk about three stuff about your application. The first thing is metadata, L checks, and the third metrics. And uh, I will go into more details. Um, and as you can see, a buffer is not a very nice one. So if you are a developer, which probably is your case, so it's not too far-fetched. And um, as a developer, you have been tasked on a project, and it's right there, and you have finished your task. The, the project is ready to be put into production. Um, what you do, you contact the ops guy, and you tell him, hey, you know, I have an application. Please um, put it in production. And the guy asks you about the operational manual, so the, the thing that let him handle everything that is action, what he should do, and experienced developer. So you know about that already, and since you know about that already, you handle him the optional manual. And you are. You? Yeah. What optional manual did you provide? Uh, of expected uh, experience and what you should do, uh, do uh, with that. For example, if there is an out of memory error, then you should restart the server. And yeah, the operational manual that you wrote contains that. So a uh, second time, you are very happy yourself and you tell him that everything is fine. Then, okay, but do how do I monitor the application? And 
was never part of any specification of the application that you were, because a money is a non-functional requirement. And um, in specification, you mainly find functional requirements, as if the user does this, the application should do that. Monitoring is out of scope. Business users don't care about monitoring. That's not, not that. Um, for them, it's expected. It's for persistence of data, of database, it's just expected. And, and point, you have three options. Option is to go back to the project manager, because in every project, there must be a project manager. And offer for more budgets. Uh, probably, she will be very pissed off, because she didn't plan that. And then she will ask for more budgets probably will make him or her look very bad. Um, so she might agree to that, but probably you will get a review, which is not uh, probably uh, not your goal. The second is you go to the project manager, you, you know him or her very well, then you are both alive, again, the ops guy, and you push the operation, the application, uh, to production. And it's a problem, you know, operational guys have no power. Um, since the project manager is representing the business power, he has budget, so he can say, yes, you will push it to production. Uh, the problem with this, uh, sorry, is that if there is any error at 8 a.m. in the morning, you will be able to be called and awaken and to handle everything. For you. The third, which is also the bad, is hey, it's a day and, and only the weekend and, and four hours. So we have 48 hours to act and monitoring anything to make the. And it happens for every project because um, business users, as I said, don't about monitoring. Um, you have to do everything yourself because, and you do it every time for every application because there is no uh, single product that handles it for you. This story might be over if you use Spring Boot. Uh, Spring Boot provides exactly uh, what I advised you. This is Spring uh, and requirements again. So they are probably never, never written, and they should be part of your job when you are doing estimate. What Spring Boot provides, which is a little out of the scope of general uh, requirements, is stuff that is really, really specific to Spring. Sometimes uh, do you want to check the configuration uh, of your application, of your running application? For example, it might work on your machine, but then when you, it's deployed on the server, it doesn't work so, so well. So you might want to check about the beams that are really instantiated by string in a remote environment. Or you might want to check uh, the configuration values, the real configuration values, those used in another environment, or controller mappings, and so on and so forth. So that Spring Boot makes Available. Little demo. And, uh, in this case, <coughs> uh, the clinic uh, of you know, the Spring Pet Clinic is the Spring application, but the Spring Clinic that I will use is the one who has been ported to Spring Boots by a kind guy on GitHub. I will use it to explain the to that. And I will just make to the application. While I can show you projects, source main, source Java, source main Java, source main resources, the tests are here, there is a POM, there is an application dot property, so it's a real Spring Boot application. Yes. 
it's just application. Um, you can go there and it's handled by Spring Security, so you can uh, just try to and also of pets, there is a list so you can and page uh, you have a list of veterinarians which can be seen as an email and to check that yeah, everything was fine and inbox for messaging well this right I'd like to monitor this application so think about this presentation one little single thing is that I have something which is called the Spring Boots. Spring Framework Boots namespace. And now Single mail dependency, nothing more, nothing less. And just now, you, I want metadata, I, which is for the moment empty because I didn't add any. And I can have uh, L check. Not very readable, it's basically basic, and not formatted, and that is not very. Uh, so, to do afterwards is properties and a property uh, which is called string dot and things you are using in they can already have something which is very helpful. So, in so if I and since <coughs> I didn't uh, any class or do anything, I just have to restart the application. Unfortunately, it's not. Uh, reloaded every time. Uh, now, that's see that now it's very nicely formatted, and as you can go uh, sub context, and now you can see that here is, is uh, listed all the beams of your applications, and also you can have. The config file, if I remember well, uh, and here we can deploy. It. And um, and here's something I didn't try before. Uh, in the Spring Boot, so one dot three release, there is something called lock file. No, lock file, perhaps. No. So that, that I thought that was large. I didn't check too much. But I, there is a context, sorry, to, to check also your logs, which is quite helpful because in many cases you don't have access to the logs because the server you don't have access to, and it's always hard to ask for the logs to the guys who has the permissions. Um, don't try it again. Uh, this is the thing that, that Google gives you. Provided you added the actuator as a dependent. Want to add is metadata, and metadata is what? Metadata, as its name implies, it can be anything. Uh, a recurring problem that I have uh, go, uh, to go to an application is application is it? Uh, for example, I might want to know about its application ID, about its group ID. Those are Maven coordinates. But about its version, and its version can be from Maven or from Git. So I want to know everything. 
uh, pack something. The first to add a dummy uh, information, and that I will share that info dot application dot dummy equal my cool property. Thing that starts with info, I might increase it a bit. Every starts with info will find its way into the info endpoint. So, So with just a line of configuration, I add metadata. It is interesting for sure, but it's not enough because it's static metadata. As I told you I probably wanted uh, dynamic metadata, and uh, such dynamic metadata is about uh, the group ID of my application, uh, the pom. So I want to have this information. Here, ID, and this information here. I group ID, which is what we displayed. And if you use Maven before, and basically that's what I did before Spring Boot, what I did to add a solid, uh, to create a proxy file and filter it through Maven. So in Maven, you have a possibility to say that. Uh, such resources can be filtered so you can uh, write uh, information from the um, palm into your file, and then you only have to read it. This is basically what to uh, do. The good thing about this is that um, Spring lets you do it without um, or more. more uh, so just by saying project.groupid, which Maven user might recognize as uh, a form, and here I say application ID, and also application ID, and again, I will do the same, sorry, for the version. Project group ID, it will find it and the artifact ID here. Again. That is only configuration. Oh. Application ID, sorry, it was artifact ID. So here you don't source anything, but the rest is group ID, which is good in the version, which I forgot the end, also. Uh, so that's star, it's artifact ID. One in the palm. Have everything, you can organization, you know, anything. So this The version uh, um, I about Maven, but I also uh, told about Git. So I probably also uh, want some uh, Git cool stuff, and I do that. Um, normal project there is a dot Git uh, folder and the plugin that Spring Boot, which was developed by a Scala guy, if I remember well. To uh, a file that uh, will put in a property file everything that you want about uh, your Git repository. Uh, the <coughs> this PL dot thirteen dot main ID. Git uh, 
ID plugin. is something like that. And uh, if you may, you know that you have to uh, bind it to a phase. So I will say that I execute the goals. The goal is automatically bound to a create resource phase, if I um, remember well. Now, problem. If I if I stop there, uh, it will be in the console when it builds, but it won't create the file. Suppose it doesn't create the file, I don't know why. So what I do is I will say that I want it to generate the file. So the file equals true. The same, if I don't configure it properly, uh, the, the, the file under RC resources. So it be put into your resources, which I don't want, but it is wanted to be built and not uh, put into my source control management. Uh, I have to, that's good because there's a configuration option, to put it under build dot out directory and the property is the name thing we expect. Now you will see uh file is a little different here. You can see there is a lot more outputs. Basically it's reading my uh, git repo and open stuff. The rest now to my info. Basically, I don't have and not so good because it's generated file, which is something I don't see it into. Target, uh, office, so but it takes only a few of them. Sorry, and the commit ID and the commit time. And when those code of Git, it's because it is a file not into a big map, but into a limited object with only has three attributes. Uh, good at that, how can we uh, have everything? And good, is a good exercise that we will do, or that I will do. Because you also how flexible Spring Boot can be. So I have a configuration class. Info config and it's annotated with configuration. And <clears throat> I will begin and will return a new info endpoint. A map. So link of object. Basically, what am I am I doing? So, um, and just by doing that, Spring Boot won't provide its own because it will detect that I am providing my info endpoint. So, it won't create 
its own. Because for input. So expect it will be complete empty, which is of course not what I want. So if to fill is link stuff that is relevant. And so if relevant is about information, everything that starts with info will fit its way into um, my map. So what I here, I will auto-wire my environment. So this is the configurable can create using the method. And don't ask me about this object because it's a very strange object. Basically, it lets you validate the name. And it's so of the string object. And, and, and the import class is to map. Sorry, I forgot to done that. What did I New link. Uh, oh, please. Yes, I will have to do that. Link to HNAP again. Object of this type. And then factory, I will say factory dot set properties. And that's it. What we do is all properties from the environment. But in those that start with, because I only want things that start with. Info. <clears throat> One, it's done. I can in hash map the results of. Basically, I will let the factory handle everything for me. And now I have the next thing. I will. Again, I don't care. Problems, I will let Green Boots initialization handle it for me. So, what did I do wrong? Like, yes, forgot about that. Sorry. Work better. <clears throat> now, if I go back to my endpoint, so again, so I got my uh, application version group ID, don't need an application ID. That's quite nice. But I put West the Git, and still I don't have any Git problem. Right now, do uh, I read actively uh, about the big property? To tell that I want something which is found in string dot git dot pass git dot Sources 
Yes. Oh. So, very easy way to read the file. Now, I will fill the DM with the passive full amount. Some copy paste here because there is not property sources, but they see the properties themselves, and it's very easy because they are here. So, what I do is something called a property. If you are using strings, our reading properties that's very very easy to do because basically that prevents you from using uh, an input reading and seeing that it's not null and stuff like that. We'll do that, and here it tells me that it's expecting load properties. Sorry, it's your properties. Put everything. Put the and now I target name here because if the target name that will it it, it, it will remove the git does something and everything uh, in my points will be at the root which i don't want i want all my git information to be under a git something because but it's also meant to be readable by humans and in case this is very important oh, oh why did i do um Sorry. Give column. String or spring boot. Uh, if, if you make it as an exception, and we now At the start of the application, not at the same time, which is quite good. Uh, yeah, I have everything. Everything. That was in my git dot which is very much so you can see everything. So uh, in the check uh, that we did in this part is we added the extra. We did just have an animator for my JSON. Everything we wanted. Because we wanted to have everything from Git, then to act something. But we need to go further. It can be done in a uh, linear with only a couple of only configuration. You don't need to to, to everything. Anything. Really, our way to monitor your application. And application. Uh, on dependencies. So, unknown dependencies is a file system because probably you're writing a lot of files. But well known, very old dependencies is a database because I do the application that don't run without database. There may be 
a normal standard SQL data set that might be databases. That be every application to purchase data. So, the L is a wrapper, is a monitor of a and return health object. And object is something which is very simple. It has a status. And the most well-known status are up and down. Basically, if your database is up, it works. If your database is down, it doesn't work. But they all, the, the, the Spring Boot team added some different statuses because, yeah, sometimes you don't know if it works or doesn't work. It's very strange, but sometimes you, you it's, it doesn't work. And out of service means it's down, but in the time in service, you know when it comes back. And this <coughs> might come with the device. So if you might want to have any additional information about this as check. Oh, all objects that are uh, um, will be aggregated. And health endpoints will aggregate all the checks and realize into checks. And every application will be cleared up and running. If one is down, will be considered down. Run the application to be okay, and the good thing is you don't need to pause the gen to know about that because Spring will also set the HTTP uh, status code to five o o here about the else check. And I want to increase the size. Yeah, much better. So here we can the application status is up because there are two references. The first is the disk space, and the second is a DB. And of course, it's a in memory DB, so it probably must be up. And my laptop is brand new, so there is a lot of free space. And check. That what I do about the here or to ho ho here because now I will be I will do something very bad I will dependency to an application but without a in the spot which is the is not a good thing to do, but uh, works for me in this case. So, and uh, or or start or or my application expects to set a, a, a solar uh, instance on a full port, which I didn't configure. So no solar running on my machine. So if I get to the else check, yeah, here there are three status, and it tells me that there is a tendency that it's down, and it, you know, I was expecting something on hotel host 8, 9, slash solar, there is nothing responding. And application itself is considered that now. Foods cannot pass JSON, so I can at least pass the HTTP status code. Something to, to, to do that. Very good about Spring Boot is that most of the numbers that you find or obtain a check. So at dependency and you don't configure them properly, it's done for you. Of might not be enough because a very common dependency 
the web service in uh, now architecture. You are you are dependent on many services, if not many, at least some. So if the web service doesn't work, you want to know it. Way to do that. So let's pretend that we want to create a new else. Create a new L stack and consider it set and consider because later in class and create a new it will be the case. Else indicator will be else object and else does for the and else um, I'm everything to be up and running. So now I should have three different uh, dependencies: the disk space, uh, the SQL database, as well as this new uh, uh, LCK. To two O O, and here I have a new indicator with status up and with my you might is taking the method. And yeah, in this case it's not very interesting to have a health indicator. So either you need to rename your method or even better to just don't accept space, uh, you might want to set the name of the bean is two ones. Have all my all three L stacks, and then must read my indicator with space. So it's cosmetic, but perhaps your ops guy uh, wants this. So here, so that so, so in this part, we saw that every dependency uh, of Spring Boot comes. With uh, out of the box, uh, else, that all else checks are aggregated into a single else check uh, point, and that you can add your own else indicators that throughout web services and something. Um, you might want to consider when you're doing this is what considered up. You might want to just check that uh, the can uh, ping the database. You might check that uh, you can take a connection out of the data pool, or want to check if we are using a record that can select dual from dual, or might want further, uh, might want to go further and do a query on the database just to check that yeah it, it works. So this this is the stuff that you have to uh, ask yourself because considering a dependency to be up. Uh, it's really a matter of your application. Sports, we will talk about metrics. And it's important because it's not because all your uh, checks, all your health checks are up, that your application is responding. For instance, there might be up, but perhaps that uh, you have too many requests on your uh, application and it respond in time. So we think Metrics is a very important part of the work. There is a nice stuff that is made by Drops Wizard, and Drops Wizard is a big competitor of Spring Boot. And before it was the only 
one. I know that, in fact, Spring Boot is a big competitor of Drupal. And Drupal has a very cool library about metrics. And it offers a, a metrics model as well as exporters to back end, so different kind of back ends. So much more, but let's stick to that. The metrics model, clearly it offers more, but at least those two simple models. And the first is a gauge. The goal is basically a value, a metric of anything. Um, for example, uh, the response time of a page is a gauge. Kind of goat, which is a counter. And counter is more specialized because basically you can infer a value of uh, when the, the current value. So the number of times the page is seen, uh, reload the page, then you know it will be plus one. So a counter is a very simple counter. Uh, so Goats that gets incremented each time. That will be a backend that you can send your metrics to. Uh, so, I just want to get metrics in JSON and go to the application. Uh, for example, uh, Let's say uh, now I have to reduce it. I have the error. We can there error. Yes, it's called oops <clears throat> with you. So, uh, so it has been called four times. If I reset it, so I find here now. Of course, here it's it's a curve. and for the gauge, uh, the oops star now has taken me 30 seconds. If I, I have no idea here, uh, I have no idea how much time it will take. So let's see. Everything in uh, on my on my page, but I want to to send it to something which is more ops friendly. And one is a G console, and G console is a way to check your um, GMX metrics. So GMX, that uh, is Java management beans around everything that you want in uh, any uh, Java application that you want, and some cats. Uh, as a regime, it's been around its own stuff. Oh. And it's been, you can get sets or call methods of any of your beans. Of course, if you don't provide a regime, it's been around any of your objects, you want this kind of feature, but you might want to let people um, manage. That's why it's called management, manage your object. Um, for example, you can uh, use GMX to configure logic, to configure and stuff like that. It's easy to use. But you and then you can choose your local process and you can achieve it. And he has some cats of Spring Boot and you can see the GDK logging, and here you can stuff about the boot. Metrics to quite easy. I will a game class, and this I will call it monitoring, uh, monitoring. configuration say that it will to 
forget that it's a bean. And I, I also don't have to forget to say that it exports a metric writer. And is in one of the um, one the one three and something they add this. I, I I don't know why, but you have to add, uh, add it if you want to send it to to GMX. And turn a new GMX metric writer. And there is a dependency. It requires an MBNX portal. The good thing is I can tell. It, uh, to uh, in, um, inject it for me. Now you will something is wrong. So it won't. And he, it was an MBN exporter, so it was expecting this, but it sounded too. too. So um, it, it, you in your the factory you have two uh, MBN exporters. You have to to to, to spell spring one you want. So easy, you have, you want the bean, which is. And for IntelliJ yells at me, normally it should work. Yeah. I stuff on in in JSON format. So I have to get back to the hook. Have here. And now, if I react to my some new and that appears in my other engine with the same value, so let's say that. Here, under a good star, attributes of value, so value is one, and star, the here, three, three, six, here, three, three, six. So, exam sense stuff. It's much easier for an ops guy to handle this in gems than, yes, probably he has a tooling to do that. Because um, the problem with uh, GMX is, um, yeah, you only have one single value. Probably your ops guys, and probably you as well, want dashboards. So, also provide reporters, and it provides HTTP reporters, but we don't need them because we already uh, have something doing. Spring Boot, uh, we have GMX, but we all already have something. The good of that is also provide a graphite uh, reporter. And basically, graphite is a store values. And it's simple in sense. It is you send it values, and it can plot them on a dashboard. So let's do that. Uh, is what is um, grant with a grant already on it. So it might for the moment. And now our own monitoring config that will send to grant. Oh, but did I forget? I forget to add the dependency. So, a new dependency here. 
and the will be matrix graphite. Now, if it's found the group ID, it must be all dot drop. With our own team member, so I will have to check my notes. So we done that. Metrics, yeah. Um, so now, side there, need to create uh, so here's a little strange because basically, we don't need a bin itself, it's the way that uh, Spring Boot works. It will turn a graphite reporter as a but let me need a representation of the graphite instance. And the graphite instance, um, sorry, is like that. So it runs on local host because I'm running my background and it's on this port. Second, the reporter. The graphite reporter is not instantiated, it's a builder. So, reporter. So now you see that it expects a metric register because uh, the metric is built around the notion of registry. The good thing is because I added the uh, metric the dependency on metric score, and as soon as Spring Boots sees that there is a matrix core dependency, it will instantiate a matrix tree for us make it available in the fact that we can say that we want a matrix register provided for us. Uh, so this for registry, I will do that so it will be more readable. And build the stuff with graphite. The now, because the thing which is very important that you don't, uh, you might forget every time is you have to start the report, and the reporter will be started and will do every five hundred milliseconds. What is my graphite stuff? So I will use a boot so and at the root yeah. application now it must be up yes I hope so and go on local host 818 have a look at it. yes It seems to work pretty well because there is no exception. Check my graphite. I see that there is something called boots, right? And since it's not the first time that I do this demo, there is already some metrics. But unfortunately, let's say that I am not interested in the oops stuff and see the oops in the last five years. But there, and next some requests. I'm owners, the veterinarian, all the staff. Now, with again, we can see, of course, it's not very uh, useful like that. So I will say that here. And sorry, I will move it and find. So now it rows and 
and we can see that there are several points around it that are different. Okay, only what you want because you have uh, a view of the trends, how, when, it's and, and stuff like that. So this is very, very interesting. And so, and basically, what might be very interesting to you and your office. So comes a point when you say, okay, that's very good what you showed me, but how do I add my own metric? Because this is good and nice, but I want to, to also to, to have my own metric in it. Okay. Uh, so on metric, uh, a class. Uh, let's make it static because it will be easier. And my custom metric. measure anything. Let's say that we want to measure something random. So a new random. So random because it's not random secure random, which is not very secure, but let's think that it's secured. That I will random between one and hundred or zero or hundred in so value. So um is a thing which is called um the GOAT service. The GOAT service is also provided by Groups. Um, so use the good service and say, okay, I will construct your argument. So, public Microsoft good. And now I will dot submit metric name. So let's say boot that goes custom and then. So now first we have created and the metric. Return the metric and service. So here I print. So, but how, when is this measure method called? And, and it's very easy. It's blowingly easy to call. You will, if you won't call it, I will, I will call it with, um, let's say, uh, a six. So this, let's make it five hundred. And every. A random value to the service, and it reports it to my dashboard. And let's have to fresh because. I need three, basically. That I have a new custom stuff. The first five. 
and it will and now because here like that so it's you by symbol now it I also had it here. It's not about that. Hmm. work. Okay, we have this little problem because um, right now what happens is that probably in your development environment, as you don't have uh, a graphite. So this is what will happen is then Spring Boot because it, it will try to start to graphite and it won't work. And this is only what you don't want in your work environment is to have a lot of an, an, um, you, you, a junk in your log. You have two 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 ways to to handle that. Either uh, you find you use Spring Boot uh, conditional on missing bin, meaning okay, okay, I have a development profile and I use a development profile. And, uh, there is um, a development profile. I won't do anything. It doesn't find the development profile. Then I will use the file. Uh, but in, it's a little complex. It also puts the responsibility of sending the metrics to your application, which is not cool because, yeah, it, it does use a lot, but it still uses a, a, a little curve, and you don't want that. Um, so what we did is, as a customer, we define only the GMX reporter, so we basically send only stuff to GMX, and then there's something called GMX trends, all them and aggregate them graphite. And it's a thing because then you can have um, a view of your stuff. And that's what is done. About metrics, and in spots, we have seen that sending the metrics to GMX is basically a no brainer. It requires just one uh, single method, one single bean uh, in, in Java config. Or XML, you can probably do that in XML, although I never even tried. And if in sending stuff to Graphite, it's also quite easy. And create your own custom metrics because, yeah, there might be metrics that are not provided out of the box Spring Boot that you might be interested in. Uh, and metrics are not only technical, so you can use this stuff uh, to have analytics on your application. And use exactly the same, uh, the same metrics, put it in the same lot, and have correlation between the metrics. That, for example, you can that um, if we if we're in a e-commerce shop, check that um, if you uh, have a, a loss of performance or let's say ten percent uh, of performance, I lost five percent of. So that might be very interesting. Thing to your business users, and that's interesting to you. You have facts that really tell that they should be uh, more cautious and more interested in the technical infrastructure and not bitch out, I don't know, $2,000 for a new server. And that's very, 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 very important, in my opinion. What I just saw there uh, is only the tip of the iceberg. You Go much, much, much further. One of the things that you might want, if you are a REST oriented guy, you might think it's very good, but it doesn't respect the REST principles. Yes, why doesn't it respect the REST principles? It doesn't respect the REST principles because I knew the endpoints, so I know where to browse, and this is completely. Uh, to what uh, rest my post should be self-declarable. So 
first I will remove the refined reporter because I don't want to have my loss. Want is I will just add always a problem pronouncing it, so I will try the head away and that will be a proper uh, media engine of state application of application state. So here I want every one of my uh, endpoints to be served under the manage subcontext. I don't want to have any uh, end user yeah, digitally uh, getting the handle of that stuff. Hey, please. Oh. So here, the is that uh, now, as I told you, I've got the manage matrix endpoint. And here, I have the new stuff that tells you where you are. And this is the FOS stuff. And normally, the roots of the manage endpoint. No. Probably, um, and again, the Jim syndrome, probably, you have a list of all uh, points. And that is very useful because now you can click and choose. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't work. I will probably have to check afterwards. And if, uh, if you go to help, it doesn't work anymore. A subcontext. So you everything. If you are interested, you can find uh, the sources for uh, the demo um, at on my GitHub. So github.com slash and Frankel slash and then Sped Clinic. And uh, the, the branch on which it is is a branch. DevOps 1.3. Uh, you're on Twitter if you were interested. Uh, if you want to offer me plenty of money for jobs, you can connect to me on LinkedIn. You can read my blog. And as some of you might know, I've written a book since one year ago or less. And tomorrow, Friday, so I'm, I'm making an announcement on it. So if you are interested, that's it. My time for some Q and A. I will just have to get back to and I will have some oh. are about make microphone type questions gosh really wow I was very good or very bad, which is not a good thing. I think very good. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, so, um, if you have any questions, then you can uh, tweet me, and or perhaps uh, you can send uh, the questions to Ina, and then I will try my best to answer them. Uh, by yes. To our email that you can see in your invitations. 
and we will be happy to answer them. I think Nicholas will be happy to answer all the questions. So thank you, Nicholas, so much for interesting presentations. Thank you, everyone, for joining. And we would like to ask you to fill the short questionnaire that you will see right now. Very important to us, and we will really appreciate your answers. Thank you again, everyone, and stay tuned with LTS. Presentation and also many thanks for attendees for participating. See you. Yeah, hope so.